person if a cop tries to give you instructions saying, please step off the sidewalk, say, go talk to Tushara. What do you say if a cop tries to talk to you? Go talk to Tushara. Great stuff, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go over some hand signals we're going to be using today. A lot of you have chant sheets. At least the majority of you get them. I have a couple more I can hand out. Uh, if our chant leader holds up one finger, we are going to do chant number one, etc., etc., through chant number 10. If you see us holding up number one, you should also throw up a number one just so everyone in the crowd can see us. We kind of have a big group today. Uh, the chants are labeled, they're all pretty easy, you know, up, up with education, down, down with deportation. We're going to practice a couple before we go over to make sure we can all stay on rhythm. Uh, our other hand signal today is going to be one fist up in the air. Uh, we're borrowing it from the civil rights movement. We are embracing the militancy. If you see one fist up, please raise your fist and then go silent. Uh, we will use this if we need to make announcements to the crowd. We will also use it if we want to take a cool picture. <laughs> One fist up, silence. Could we all do that together now? Great, we all look great. If you see two fists up, you are going to sit down on the ground. We will hopefully not be using this today, but if you see two fists up, sit down cross-legged as soon as you can. This way we can make announcements to the crowd and move easily. Great. So what does hand signal number one mean? Great. What does one fist up mean? Awesome. What about two fists? Great. Who is allowed to talk to the cops? Awesome. Thank you for coming, Tushar. We're so happy to have you. Okay. You're going to notice people in two sort of uniforms. The first is a vest like this. We are your marshals today. We're going to be controlling you, our crowd. Do you have any questions about where to go? If you didn't get to sign in, if you just have uh, any general concerns, come up to a marshal. We will answer your questions. We'll be texting each other throughout the action. We are going to make sure you guys are all good today. Uh, there are people in white armbands. Can one of you come up? There we go. Amy and Rob are two of them back here. There are going to be more floating through the crowd. These are our de-escalators. If someone tries to heckle you on the sidewalk, if someone from the building, some rich person starts yelling at you, they're gonna help you de-escalate that situation. Rob is also one of our medics. I don't think any of us will be injured today, but just in case, Rob is going to be able to handle that. There's another medic too, right? Charlie. Char Charlie, there we go, Charlie is also a medic. So vests are marshals, if you just have any general questions. If you're having a problem with someone not from this protest, you're gonna to talk to a white armband. Anything else? <laughs> hey, Allison, yeah. just real quick. Yes. Hey, I'm Max. Uh, I'm gonna be live streaming this event on our Facebook page. So if you don't wanna be streamed onto the page, just don't go near my phone. I won't like, you know, go find you or anything. See so you're aware that's happening. We're trying to get the word out, so I'll be doing that. Uh, two more announcements for identifying people. Sam is also a de-escalator. He's in the red hat and the red armband because he is very important. Uh, people in the green hats, you can see them on the other side of the grass there. They are legal observers. They are not participating in this protest today, but they'll be taking notes and observing. They are different than the vests for the marshals. So we are going to be taking a very short march just down the street and then turning towards the apartment. We will be going up, there's sort of a half semicircle driveway and that's where we'll be camping out for the action. Uh, and then we'll be dispersing probably about a half hour, 45 minutes into the day. Uh, thank you all for coming. I hope this goes really well. Do we want to run through a couple chants together? Uh, where are our chant leaders? Which one do you want to start with? Uh, how about, let's uh, say it loud, say it clear.
sound great. If we do want to cut off a chant, we're going to throw up a... Great. Uh, I think that's it if we want to start getting in a marching formation. Before we do that, we have like three extra signs. Does someone want to grab one? They look great. One of them has Ragsdale on it. Can you save now targeted? Oh, yeah. That's a great idea. Uh, today we are marching on Daniel Ragsdale. He was originally the deputy director of ICE. All right. So while we are live, yeah. so uh, while we are kind of uh, watching them getting ready and stuff, can you just introduce yourself and talk about uh, who are you, who is everybody here, what, and what what is this action about? Yeah. Hey. So I'm Austin. Uh, I'm elected leadership of Metro DC DSA. We're about the third largest uh, affiliate of the Democratic Socialists of America. Uh, we're here because we're going to go after a gentleman named Daniel Ragsdale. Daniel Ragsdale used to work for ICE. He was an attorney and worked his way up over 20 years. Um, you might have heard of him since then. He was appointed temporary director of ICE uh, during the uh, Trump transition. Uh, he was kind of replaced by someone pretty soon thereafter, but uh, and he went back to being a deputy director. That was his highest position he reached at ICE. Uh, now he works for Geo Group, where he works for a company that um, profits off of detaining immigrants and he sort of cashes in on the connections he's made uh, by working at ICE for 20 odd years. Um, we're going to his house today because uh, he's essentially someone who for his time in ICE was an attorney who fought to make sure that ICE agents were able to access uh, immigrants' homes and terrorize them. Um, and so we don't believe that he should get any peace and any rest right now in his own home. We're going to his house for that reason. Um, we sort of think this is like a crisis moment. A lot of people are starting to call for the abolishment of ICE, um, and we think that's right. But as socialists, we recognize that the profit motive sort of obscures all things. So any sort of moment that has uh, someone who could profit off of something, ICE contracts, they, ICE will remain. ICE will remain so long as someone's profiting off of it in the private sector. So we want to challenge people to give up um, making money on uh, on ICE contracts. Thank you, Rick. Good. from the comments. Somebody yeah. asked about uh, the fact that Obama has deported the most of any president. Uh, is this a Trump-specific issue, or does this extend on kind of further back in history? Um, I mean, this extends further back in history. I mean, in the practical matter, uh, Ragsdale worked for um, you know, INS. It at one time was, uh, you know, before it was ICE, there's other he was working for before his ice so yeah it does transcend time it transcends it being ice um, but there's always been a essentially say it loud say it clear immigrants are welcome here say it loud say it clear immigrants are welcome here say it loud say it clear immigrants are welcome here say it loud say it clear immigrants are welcome here say it loud say it clear immigrants are welcome here
children! They are still your children! Not the children! Immigrant children! don't know about DSA, the right. largest socialist organization in the United States. by ICE work. For 20 years, Daniel Ragsdale went to work for an organization that tears people from their homes. For the last 10 months, he has gone to work for a company that makes millions every year from locking people up in a jail. A company has become infamous for abusing the people it detains. So we're here to tell Daniel Ragsdale that we've drawn a line in the sand. As long as he works for agencies and companies that terrorize our neighbors, he will not be able to hide. So when ICE invades a home, they have the legal authority to check the status of everyone they encounter. 
Some may be taken while others are left behind with the heavy challenge of trying to find out where their loved ones are being held and how they can establish any sort of contact with them along the way. Or the entire family may be taken, not knowing when they'll be separated or if they'll see each other again. The family may stay together at a center with horrible living conditions. Parents see their children suffer and they are denied the ability to protect them and even punished for trying. Or the family is separated, including young kids from their parents who are taunted with the threat that their children will be adopted out and never seen by them again. With a backlog of over half a million cases in immigration court, these individuals can expect to remain in detention for months, possibly years, for being deported before de being deported, shuffled from prison, prison bed to prison bed in the meantime and struggling to stay in touch. Over two-thirds of ICE detainees are held in private prisons, and Daniel Ragsdale's employer, the GEO Group, is one of the largest private prison companies profiting from it. All over the U.S. and even beyond its borders, wherever people can be locked up in whatever form and at whatever age, the GEO Group is there to make money for its executives and its shareholders, no matter what it costs anyone else. So the GEO Group boasts of a contract compliance team now led by Daniel Ragsdale that, indeed, that maintains what they call integrity, professionalism, and quality. Bullshit. This team alleges to take pride in auditing their facilities, developing corrective action plans, and reviewing their healthcare programs. So they say. In reality, it means securing state, local, and federal funding while withholding medical care from those in custody and even letting them die. It means threatening solitary confinement for those who refuse to participate in so-called voluntary work programs where workers are paid less than a dollar a day, performing essential maintenance on the facilities where they're being held. So let's be clear. The GEO Group wants families to be torn apart because that's good for their bottom line. GEO Group's business model depends on not only having guaranteed quotas of being, people being detained and inflating the cost estimates of holding them, but also forcing them to work for nothing. GEO Group has said explicitly that, quote, I wanna get this right, were a court to conclude that the GEO Group must pay thousands of detainees a minimum wage, it would significantly affect the prices that GEO would have to charge for business. And that this quote poses a So it's a little too far to uh, see on the live stream, but uh, there are, uh, there's been one cop and one security guard who have been kind of on the premises since this uh, arrived at the apartment building. Again, this is a private apartment building, and the individual that they're targeting is, um, is uh, on the fifth floor. He's just one of the apartments in an entire apartment building full of occupants. Uh, it appears that the police have just gotten a second uh, van that's arrived. I don't know if the police are going to try to push them out or get rid of them or something, uh, or if they're just going to keep watching, but um, really we'll see what happens. We're going to have Adax, uh, a member from Adax speak. Adax is um, camped out across the street right now fighting for rights. And... <laughs> voices are a little, it gets cold out there at night. Hey, brothers and sisters, for justice, for equality, for human rights, thank you for inviting us here because it is the same fight. And it's not just the same fight in our hearts about human rights. The fact is, people with disabilities are having a crisis right now about community services, and really the crisis is driven by workforce poor wages, no benefits, and so on. And guess what? A lot of this workforce, a very significant number of them are immigrants, in, including like dreamers and so on. So when this threat happens like this, it's a direct threat on the lives and liberty of people with disabilities, because you're talking about taking away about 30% of our workforce, and there's already not enough. What we need to do is the opposite, and stop treating people like commodities, whether they're people with disabilities for professionals to make money off of us, or workforce to be okay to be here until it's not uh, economically feasible or politically and ideological okay and you throw people away. We're not gonna settle for that. By sticking together, we can win this fight, and it is the same thing. So we're really glad that you're here. We certainly understand about this area and the driveway and all, and you'll have fun with that. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, if y'all are going to be around or whatever, you can join us. We're locked in here for a while for a protracted thing because our issue is related to a small number of people that, in fact, are being tortured purposefully 
and put into pain to control their behavior. Why? So a well-heeled, privately funded, kind of murky financially outfit can make millions of dollars. Economic justice and human rights. One love, y'all, and thanks for having us here. Yeah. Yeah. If we can clear a path down the middle here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So we're here today to speak to Daniel Ragsdale, one of the public officials who made the transition from federal employee to corporate life. Can you raise your hand if you know who Daniel Ragsdale is? Okay, that's more than I expected. <laughs> information on Daniel Ragsdale, but I'm going to walk you through some of the details of his illustrious career with, within immigration enforcement. Daniel Ragsdale graduated from Fordham Law and started working as an attorney uh, at the former Immigration and Naturalization Service in 1997. In 2003, when the Department of Homeland Security was created and NIS ceased to exist, he joined the newly established Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency and moved up through the ranks as Chief Management Officer to, of ICE to Chief of Enforcement Law Division before being promoted to Deputy Director in 2014. You may have heard Daniel Ragsdale's name in the news last January. On President Trump's first day in office, he named Ragsdale Acting Director of ICE. Ten days later, Trump changed his mind and Ragsdale was removed from that position. Ragsdale didn't leave ICE though. He went back to being deputy director until he ended his 20 year ICE career in May. Why did Daniel leave ICE in May 2017? Did he finally see that his work was tearing families apart? Did he regret working with the Trump administration as it rounded up immigration activists? No, Daniel left ICE because he got a job at Geo Group. In fact, he got a very good job at Geo Group. He is the executive vice president of contract compliance. Executives at his level in the company are paid $400,000 to $500,000 a year. Boo! Ragsdale may have left ICE, but in his farewell letter to colleagues, Daniel wrote that while ICE may be losing me as a colleague, please know that I will continue to be a strong advocate for you and your mission. Boo! the revolving door that lets former federal employees join industries funded by the federal government. As Executive Vice President of Contract Compliance, Bragsdale will be helping. <laughs> Directly involved in making sure Geo Group continues to get hundreds of millions of dollars in federal contract money. In an interview about ICE, Daniel Ragsdale said he knows that deportation is, quote, traumatic for folks. He went on to say that, quote, the narrative about separating families, you know, sort of gets a little bit ratcheted up. In other words, Daniel Ragsdale wants you to think that his job isn't that bad. He's just enforcing the rule of law. But we know what his real job is, making Geo Group a profit. And we know how he does it, by terrorizing people. We support migrants because we are human. We know that people should not be torn from families for crossing a border. And we are here today outside of Daniel Ragsdale's home because we are socialists. And as socialists, we know that it's the forces of capitalism, destructive economic policies, foreign military intervention, climate change, that increasingly force people to leave their homes and relocate in order to survive. People in all countries have the right to live without fear of being persecuted by the government and by bosses, but we currently have a system that drives people out of their homes and punishes them for finding new ones. There are some recent programs that aim to protect some immigrants. These programs, including deferred action for childhood arrivals and temporary protected status, are important. They enable people to work, go to school, live life in the U.S. without fear of being torn from their homes. Across the United States, our neighbors, our families, colleagues, classmates, and comrades are working to improve their communities through the protections that these programs provide. However, DACA and TPS were developed as market-based solutions created primarily for the benefit of employers. These programs offer temporary relief for immigrants but dehumanize their recipients. 
They require rigid qualifications, expensive application processes, and tough renewal requirements. Neither DACA nor TPS provides recipients with a path to permanent lawful status. And even so, these programs are at risk of being dismantled. So, what do we want? We demand respect and security for all people, regardless of immigration status. Migrants, migrants are not valuable just because they generate wealth for our local economies or earn college degrees. We demand an end to detention and to profit in detention, which incentivizes locking people up and does nothing to keep communities safe. And most importantly, we demand an end to deportation. Criminalizing migrants, like the criminalization of so many others, led to the creation of a system that tears communities and families apart, all while enriching those that profit from this trauma. It has led to a system that lets people like Daniel Ragsdale become millionaires as others are sent to their deaths. We're not going to stand by as ICE agents raid our community, imprison our neighbors, and get a few rich at the expense of the rest of us. We will fight for a world without arbitrary borders and prisons. We will act on our values as socialists and stand in solidarity with those suffering at the hands of capitalism. We will not be silent. And again, a shout out to our comrades at ADOPT who've been holding it down for several days now. Thank you, Stacey. All right, we're going to pause really quick and do a quick uh, chant. So say it loud, say it clear. Immigrants are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear. Immigrants are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear. Immigrants are welcome here. Say it loud, say it clear. Immigrants are welcome here. Well, thank you guys. Before we leave tonight, I want to talk a little bit about Donald Trump. Now, I'm not sh I'm sure no one in this crowd is a fan of President Trump. I'm sure very few people in DC would say they're fans of President Trump since 97% of the voted of the city voted Democrat in 2016. But do you know who is a fan of Donald Trump? Geo Group. The Trump administration's crackdown on immigration is a business opportunity for Geo Group. Seeing this opportunity, Geo Group made the sound decision to donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to Trump-related PACs and his inauguration fund. In fact, Trump seems to be their favorite politician. They gave more to Donald Trump than they have ever given any, to any campaign in the past. Why does Geo Group love Donald Trump? Because they want an even larger stake in the business of keeping over 40,000 people a day in detention. Just three months in, in 2018, Geo Group has been rewarded more than $150 million in government contracts. In 2017, Geo Group received more than $469 million in government contracts. More than a quarter of Geo Group's revenue comes directly from ICE contracts, and they want to see this number grow. Do you know who manages those contracts, guys? Every new migrant detained means more money in Geo Group's pockets. Geo Group will continue to build new prisons and target new communities to fill them. Executives will continue to reward themselves with salaries of over $1.5 million, which make it easier to afford cozy apartments in Foggy Bottom. We can't expect ICE or Geo Group to hold themselves accountable. It's on us to stand with those who are fighting back and to confront those who have made it their mission to bring fear to our communities. We're going to continue to fight for as long as we can. Daniel Ragsdale is the first deportation prof profiteer we are visiting, but he is not going to be the last. Every month, we will be exposing another profiteer, and we need you to join us. If you are not plugged in, please find Aaron or anybody else with an armband or with a vest and get plugged in um, so you can give them your contact information and you can come to our next training. Um, thank you again for coming out. You guys are awesome. Uh, do you want to give a chance? Yeah. Um, no borders, no nations, fuck deportations. 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 No borders, no nations, fuck deportations.
right, guys, we can head out now. <laughs> Should we just turn about He's face? Going out the way we came in, so you can turn around, hook a right, and then hook a left down 25th. Uh, if we can all meet back up at the park, we'd love to chat with you guys before we go home. Do you mind doing a quick interview while we yeah. walk away? Right? <laughs> so uh, we're on a live stream. So okay, yeah, go ahead. Are you are you able to walk right? Now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, first, could you just introduce yourself and then sure. tell me about the event we just had and whether you consider it a success? Yeah, my name is Margaret McLaughlin. I'm chair of Metro DC DSA. Um, and yeah, this event was a major success. We had um, over 70 people show up um, to expose one of the biggest profiteers of the the immigration economy, um, which is, I mean, horrendous and barbarous. Um, and we're glad to see the um, adapt people come over and stand in solidarity with us. Um, so yeah, I think it was a, a good, yeah. What do you think are kind of the implications of a private interest being able to profit off of uh, the state's ability to deport? I mean, it, it allows for pay to play. It, it, it allows for companies to, um, to <laughs> it allows allows for companies to uh, give money to candidates and to political organizations in the hopes that they get contracts out of them. Um, and instead of answering questions of a like a policy questions of a nature of bettering the lives of people that live in this country, people are thinking about their economic motives, which is getting more money for themselves and the terrible systems that they run. And you mentioned that this isn't going to be the last of actions like this. Uh, what can we be expecting uh, from GSA DC uh, in the next few months? Well, there are many, many more people that profit off of the immigration industrial complex, so we'll be continuing to expose them um, throughout the rest of 2018. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.
waiting for you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Great job. I'm just going to yell. I did this one. Okay. I don't know why I have a second bullhorn. Um, yes. Hi, everybody. That went really well. Uh, thank you to all of the de escalators, marshals, and to Shara for talking to a cop today. You all should have signed in when you got here, but if you didn't, hang back. Can everyone with a clipboard please raise that clipboard? It's just Aaron at this point? Great. Uh, <laughs> we are having our next meeting on Sunday at 10 a.m. I know it is the day after St. Patrick's Day, but we are going to be picking our next target at that meeting. We have a corporation picked out, and we're going to see which executive lives in D.C. It's going to be a short research training, and then we're going to all get to work and break up into teams. It's a really valuable skill to learn. I'd love it if you guys could all come out. And then once we've picked our target, we're going to pick our next date sometime in April and do this again. Uh, who has the tiny URL sign? Someone on the... No, on, the the, back of the, on the back of your sign, it's like, there we go. Faces. You got it. Can you hold that up nice and loud? If you go to this URL, this is the event link for our next meeting. We will also be emailing it to us after you signed in. That's all the information you should need. Thank you guys for coming out today. This is a way bigger crowd than we initially thought we were going to get, and we're happy it went really well. <laughs> go to your home. Where are you go? You just want to play I'm doing a live stream. Do you mind doing a quick interview before we uh, wrap up here? So, uh, you spoke earlier on the uh, steps there. I would love it, first of all, you could just introduce yourself and then uh, tell me kind of what was your motivation for being out here today uh, and do you think you were really successful? I'm Steve. I'm a Richard 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 i I'm a Richard i I'm a Richard 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 to, to the streets in DC and let people know who are walking around. Hopefully, other people learn that yeah, these are people who live near us. Um, they might be our neighbors too, nominally, but they're not here to protect any of us. Um, and we do need to let them know that we're not okay and that we're standing with everyone else. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Ernie. <laughs> All right. So with that, I'm going to cut the live stream here to everybody who watched. Uh, like, share, subscribe. There's also a link to our Patreon uh, in the description, so uh, please check that out. Um, basically what happened here is a quick summary. They started here at uh, George Washington Circle. This is kind of Foggy Bottom, the uh, George Washington University area. Uh, they walked over to a nearby apartment building uh, where there is uh, basically an, a former ICE official who now works at Geo Group, which is a corporation that uh, that deals with housing uh, detained immigrants. So uh, the this organization is pointing out uh, what they see as sort of a uh, profit motive for deportation, which is what they're protesting against. So uh, they say that they're going to be picking another target and that probably in another month or so they're going to do something like this. So uh, at News to Share, we're going to keep track of that kind of thing, make sure that we uh, cover uh, any events like that that go on. So like, share, subscribe. Uh, what do you think of their action? Do you think that they're right, wrong, sort of right, sort of wrong? Uh, leave your comments in the description please be civil uh, and uh, just comment your ideas and have a good discussion so like share subscribe check out the patreon in the description and thank you for watching